iOS 10.3 Beta 2 is here. It's a very exciting update with a lot of smaller changes. So let's go ahead and take a look at what's new as is typical. Everything that's changed, every small, tiny thing, including all of the bigger features. So I did go ahead and dig through it. And in this particular version of iOS 10.3 Beta 2, there are a number of changes and fixes. So I will be listing those. But first, just wanted to show you that before updating, I had 48.36 gigabytes on the first beta after I had 49. So it gave me a good amount of storage. Now, a lot of users are reporting a lot of storage being added to their devices when updating to 10.3. This is because of the Apple file system. It's optimizing all of your files. And as a result, you get a lot of extra storage, especially the higher gigabyte your device. So probably one of the most important changes in this update is the fix of the famous text message bug. So I shared this one with you that would immediately freeze the other person's phone. It still kind of happens in this update with the first method, it'll hang for just like two seconds and then unfreeze. So I'm sure if you copy and pasted this and sent this a lot, it could get pretty annoying. As you can see, it still kind of freezes it, but iOS learns to read it. Now, if you do try the second method, it still does work. I don't know why Apple didn't patch this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and send the more dangerous version and it does hang the device for a good 15 seconds. So I'm not sure why they didn't patch it through and through, but I was curious, so I kept digging. And it turns out that not only is the second dangerous method still working, but also the malicious contact file card, which I will go ahead and load up in an iCloud drive. So that one is more dangerous. Now I haven't had it break messages. I think the main fix is that messages app just doesn't break anymore but I'm gonna send it and show you what happens. And just to show you guys, it still messes with the messages app. So this is on 10.3 beta two. And when you get that text message, the less harmful one, you can't even open it up. Uh, it's very, very slow. It makes your whole messages app unresponsive. So Apple sort of patched the symptoms and uh, I'm gonna show you guys what happens when I send you the very dangerous one but the main issue is still there. The way that Apple reads these files when they arrive to your device still makes it hang with uh, the certain malicious ones. So, and just like that. So it went ahead and froze it mid swipe. So the interesting thing is uh, it still kind of works and it'll freeze and hang for like five to 10 seconds. So it does mess with your messages app, but not as bad as this one right here. So method two is still the one that will freeze your phone. These have sort of been patched where it doesn't hang too bad. For iPad Pro users on 10.3, Beta 2 fixes an issue where if you were to try and charge your Apple Pencil, it wouldn't charge past 5%. In the camera app, there was an issue with the telephoto lens not activating when using two times the zoom. So if you put your finger over this and in certain situations, it just wouldn't activate. So that's since been fixed. Now, Wi-Fi calling in Beta 2 of iOS 10.3 has been updated to support the three carrier in UK. Now, if you guys were using any third party phone apps, caller ID apps, they wouldn't work in 10.3 beta one because the call kit was disabled and it's since been enabled and fixed in 10.3 beta two. So all of those apps will begin to work again. And I'm almost certain Apple has been watching my videos because they patched a bug. I showed you guys how to do up to the latest version of 10.3. Now in beta two, it's been patched and that's how to respring your device from the notification center, drag over to the first page like this and click on the search bar and it would respring when you let go, but that no longer works. A uh, cool thing is there's still a couple other sneaky ways that Apple didn't realize how to do it. So slide up here on the first page, click on the voice icon and just tap in the middle here, let go and click cancel and your device resprings. They also didn't patch the one in the control center. So if you tap airdrop in the camera at the very same time, it freezes your phone and uh, then it will respring once you click cancel. And on the iPhone 5 and 5S, I showed you guys a trick how to remove animations completely in iOS 10. The interesting thing is Apple sort of patched it in 10.3 beta 2. So where you open up apps, it changes the animation slightly. It's almost there, but when you click home, it like abruptly cancels it. Um, I'll show you guys on a stock version what it's supposed to look like. So when I click on the app store before it closes, it sort of does this weird instant close but almost still works. App Switcher has no animation whatsoever. So they sort of patched that bug, but it's still almost there. Now from here on out, I'm gonna show you some features that existed in beta one of 10.3. I just missed them and didn't show them in the original video. So I just wanted to throw them all in. And there's a lot, a lot of uh, bigger ones even. So anyways, in the Apple Maps app, Apple actually removed the 3D globe option for whatever reason it's now confirmed that the earth is flat. You can no longer get that 3D globe view, which is actually kind of nice. Shame to see that one go. In Apple Music playlists on 10.3 now, 
you can actually uh, change the order of songs when you have repeats enabled. Notice that as soon as you enable it, they disappear on 10.2 over here, but on 10.3, you can still change the order of the songs. Very interesting change to settings. When you open it now on 10.3, it has a black splash screen. So it opens up with a black screen, and this is only when you have it opened it for like a few minutes or it's completely closed. So for whatever reason, that happens. Also, up here below the new iCloud little uh, hub, Below it, there are options for notifications. So when you have a notification in settings for uh, whatever you need to do, you'll see it here and it'll shortcut you straight there. So I've seen one for iPhone iCloud storage almost full. I have one for iPhone backup failed, turn on two-factor authentication. So basically you'll get your notifications in here for settings. Now in the privacy tab, if you click on it and scroll all the way down, diagnostics and usage has been renamed to just analytics. Now inside of here, there's a couple of new options. So automatically send and don't send has been renamed to just share iPhone and watch analytics. And you can just disable that with one little toggle. Also, there's a new option to share iCloud analytics. So if you want Apple to keep improving that, you can have that enabled. And a couple smaller but very useful changes to the App Store. Actually, looking at reviews now, you can rate whether or not they are helpful. So just 3D touch on a review and you can say helpful or not helpful. Also, you are allowed to submit reviews without typing in your password now. So every time you wanna do that, you no longer have to go through the hassle. Now, if you guys download an app that hasn't been updated in a very long time to support newer firmwares, you guys will actually get a new alert for it. It looks just like this. It says App Shopper needs to be updated. This app will not work with future versions of iOS. And uh, basically this suggests that iOS 11 will drop 32-bit support. So the iPhone 5 and 5C and the iPad 4 may not be supported in future versions of iOS 11. Jumping into the news app, there is actually a new change here. And by the way, did you notice it had a black splash screen as well? So some apps have that and some don't. But in your favorites, if you guys ever say you didn't like a certain article, dislike the channel and you go in here there's a new option to show the disliked channel so you can re-like them from in here and a very interesting change so on the keyboard this took me a while to notice but the emoji key is inverted if you'll notice that over here it's just a stencil outline and in here it's actually filled up so that's the only one that's actually changed a very small change in safari that's very easy to miss so previously we know that if we actually long held the search bar it gives us an option to paste and go now that's for a url i was 10.3 is smarter now so what if it's just a word so i'm going to go ahead and uh, copy this word and i'm going to go ahead and paste a word it says paste and search before it said paste and go for words and urls but now 10.3 can distinguish between the both and change the wording accordingly and also a very tiny one if you actually enter the search bar and then long press now you have an option to paste and go where previously you didn't on 10.2 and older. In iOS 10.3, you cannot put a custom alphanumeric code in uh, digits that is shorter than four characters for whatever reason here. So I'm just gonna do a one zero, one zero on both of these and go ahead and click next. And it actually won't let you use this code even if you say use code. It says this passcode must be longer. Now on the iPhone 5 and 5S, if you would open a folder very quickly, look at the text on the app icons above it. They're all blurred and it's hard to distinguish what's going on as soon as you close it. That has been patched in iOS 10.3. So if I close it, it's not all pixelated like it was before. It still is not in sharp focus, but not as bad as before here. The text is way too pixelized to read. Now, I don't know if you guys have been following Angry Birds, but they often change their app icons to suit certain events, even holidays. But now a new API inside of iOS 10.3 allows developers to do it on the fly. So without reinstalling an app, you guys might go into your springboard and notice that some app icons have a changed icon. That's the power Apple gave to developers in 10.3, so they can change app icons without issuing an update. Now, another change to CarPlay that was issued that I didn't mention in my last video, besides the recent apps over here, there's now a new option when playing music or media to click up next and see what you have going uh, that's gonna be playing next in a sort of playlist view. Now, Fuel Test, a secret hidden tool in the phone app for measuring signal strength, has been updated on 10.3 to support 
uh, Intel modems. So if you had an iPhone 7 or 7 Plus that used the Intel, not the Qualcomm modem, you weren't able to access this and actually see what's going on. But now you are able to. And Verizon now supports Wi-Fi calling over iCloud. So any iCloud synced device, such as your Apple Watch, your MacBook, your iPad, can now pick up your Verizon calls using 10.3. And that's it for the features in iOS 10.3, but I wanted to get into the speed performance and actually mention a couple other bugs. So the shutter bug issue, the one I talk about all the time is still present in 10.3. I messaged Apple. I actually, you know, put my heart out there. I'm like, this really affects me. I film a lot with my iPhone and this bug is so annoying. I have it on all of my iPhone 7 and 7 Pluses in the stock camera app. So the shutter bug still exists. And I was very happy to learn that a couple of really cool bugs still exist, such as the one to remove icon labels and also the one where you can actually remove the dock entirely. So I showed you guys this in my prank video. And as you can see, the dock still disappears and stays hidden on iOS 10.3. And circle icons still works on the SE 5S and iPhone 5 on 10.3. So I was happy to learn that. And the very last one is remove status bar using the crash text no longer works. So I couldn't get that to work. Uh, just because Apple sort of patched how iPhone reads it, but you can still freeze devices using a method number two. And lastly, the Geekbench, I've got 3474 single, 5697 multi-core, and that just crashed on me for whatever reason. Okay, so before 5802 and 3483, so a little bit down, but not by much. So pretty good numbers, but I gotta say it overall feels fantastic. It's very speedy, responsive, and I'm liking where it's going. The biggest change for me is that it reduces the file system uh, requirements, so you actually get more storage back with this update. So I love that. Guys, I'll keep you updated on any more news and features, but thanks so much for watching. Peace.